Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the latest stock market news updates that investors need to know about, and we will also talk about the best stocks to buy right now. With that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into it. Recently, stocks fell, as we see the Nasdaq, the S&P 500, and the Dow Jones decreasing in the respected prices. However, investors should not be shocked about this, considering that the general stock market has been trending upwards very aggressively, so a pullback was imminent. But I specifically want to focus in on the Dow, considering that Amazon has replaced Walgreens in this index, which is great news for both the Dow and Amazon, so I'd love to hear your thoughts about this down below. If you didn't know, Amazon is a gigantic e-commerce company, which I personally hold in my portfolio. So if you don't already hold this company, I would highly recommend you go and do your own research on the company to determine if it's a good investment opportunity for you. But with that being said, let's move on to our next story. Recently, the FTC is suing to try to block a $25 billion merger between Kroger and Albertsons. For context, this merger would combine the second and fourth largest grocery store chains in the United States, and the FTC believes that this will lead to higher food prices and decreased competition in this area, and they believe that Americans are already spending way too much money on their food as it is due to inflation, so that's why the FTC is trying to block this merger between Kroger and Albertsons. If this merger goes through, this would create a mega grocery chain which would own over 5,000 stores across the United States, and some of these stores would include Freddie Meyer, Ralph's, and Safeway, and overall, this this one company would control between 15 to 20 percent of the entire market. However, Kroger and Albertsons are actually pushing back against the FTC, and they are claiming that their customers would actually see lower prices if they teamed up and not higher prices. Then the FTC came out with another claim, which said that this merger would result in lower wages for their employees and worse working conditions. But then Kroger and Albertsons responded by saying that most of their workers are already unionized, so if that were to happen, then the union would correct this. The reason why investors should know about this is because if Kroger and Albertsons actually merge, that means that their share price would absolutely explode. So this could act as a very positive catalyst for the stock price, and I think investors definitely need to be aware of this. Next up, let's talk about Microsoft and how they are continuously investing into artificial intelligence. I personally hold a Microsoft in my portfolio because I believe they are one of the best technology companies that money can buy. Microsoft has been at the forefront of this AI revolution thanks to their $13 billion stake in ChatGPT maker named OpenAI. However, Microsoft has also bet on other artificial intelligence companies. For instance, they invested $2.1 billion in a French startup called Mistral AI. Ultimately, Mistral's tech will be available to Microsoft Azure users, so this is going to radically impact and benefit Microsoft users as well as Microsoft as a company, and that's why I personally hold that amazing technology company in my portfolio, and I'm clearly referring to Microsoft. Microsoft. Speaking about technology news, let's talk about Samsung, which recently came out with their Galaxy Ring. This wearable technology will help track sleep and activity patterns in the Samsung Health app, and it will also allow you to make contactless payments, which is phenomenal news for people who like to buy things on the go. The reason this story is in the news is because Apple is also thinking about releasing their own wearable technology in the form of a ring. This will help Apple's top and bottom line, and I think investors need to be aware of this. But that's not all, because these rings are just getting started. According to Samsung, they believe this wearable technology will be far more convenient than Galaxy smartwatches, because who wants to sleep with a Galaxy smartwatch or even an Apple watch on their wrist? It would be much easier for a ring to track your sleeping patterns rather than a bulky smartwatch, but that's not all. The first generation of this ring will measure things like heart rate, breathing, and movement during your sleep. But we are just getting started, because in other iterations of this ring, Samsung wants to develop a non-invasive glucose monitoring system through this ring as well. It seems that there are many things that technology companies can do with this ring technology, and I want investors to be aware of this, especially before Apple hops on the bandwagon. You should also be aware that the lunar lander named Odysseus from Intuitive Machines has recently sent back its first images of the moon. However, Intuitive Machines' share price Price, ticker symbol LUNR, has been dropping recently, especially since their spacecraft actually tipped over on the moon.
moon. Due to this accident, their mission will be cut short because the way it fell, it fell on some of their solar panels, which let less light in, meaning that it can't charge itself back up. And that's why they're going to have to cut this mission short, which will negatively impact their share price. In a more positive news story, a stock recently jumped by 36%, and that would be none other than Altus USA. The reason for the enthusiasm surrounding this stock is due to reports that Charter Communications is thinking about buying the broadband company. So this would be great news for both Charter Communications and Altus USA. In another quick news update, Adidas, which is a sports apparel company, is selling off another batch of Yeezy sneakers, and they are trying to cut ties with rapper Yee over his anti-Semitic comments. But that's not all, because we also have the coffee chain named Starbucks in the news, as they introduced a new pork-flavored latte in China for the Lunar New Year. It seems that Starbucks has released very interesting combinations for their coffee, considering that they are pushing their olive oil coffee in the United States, which is very interesting. I would love to hear your thoughts down below if you would drink pork-flavored coffee or olive oil coffee. Now, I probably would try the pork-flavored coffee, but I'm not a huge fan of olive oil. Also, I want to point out, if you are looking for fantastic stocks, ETFs, or mutual funds to buy into, I would highly encourage you to look into ticker symbol SPY. This is an ETF which tracks the S&P 500, and it essentially means that you will never underperform the market. However, if you want to be more specific and less diversified, I would highly recommend that you look further into XLF, which is a financials ETF, or XLK, which is a technology ETF. I personally own SPY, XLF, and XLK in my portfolio, and I would encourage you to do your own research on these ETFs, because so far, they have returned a lot of value to me personally. Next up, let's talk about another company which has returned a lot of value to me, and that would be Domino's, which is a pizza chain, and their ticker symbol is DPZ. On top of that, Domino's is also seeing a lot of momentum based upon their revamped loyalty program and a fresh partnership with Uber Eats. So this is very positive news for both Uber and DPZ. But it's not all good news, because one of my favorite investments, which is Berkshire Hathaway, recently fell in their share price. And I'm talking about ticker symbol BRK.B. This is a holdings company, which is owned and operated by legendary investor Warren Buffett himself, along with a few others. Recently, Berkshire Hathaway actually posted a record annual profit, but despite this, their share price still fell. The reason why their share price is pulling back is due to recent comments by Warren Buffett himself, who said that the future gains of this company could start to narrow. However, this is not going to stop me from investing into this phenomenal company, and I would highly recommend that you do your own research on a Berkshire Hathaway, because they are an amazing company to have in your portfolio. Now let's jump over to some good news in regards to Beyond Meat. Beyond Meat is a meat substitute company, and their shares recently skyrocketed as investors cheered better than expected fourth quarter revenue results. Beyond Meat's stock literally jumped by around 78% in aftermarket trading, which is absolutely insane. And this is despite their revenues actually falling by 8% to $73.7 million. The reason for this enthusiasm is because their revenues were anticipated to drop even lower, down to around $66.7 million. So clearly, they beat this estimate, which caused their share price to ignite and surge higher. Another reason why the company started to increase in their share price is because the company also forecasted improving margins this year as a result of a significant restructuring effort within the company. However, the company also brought in some bad news because they said that its US sales fell by around 23.5% during the quarter. This would be due to a decrease in both grocery store sales and restaurant demand falling at the same time. So this was pretty catastrophic for this company. But we do have some good news. The good news comes in the form of their international sales, which jumped by 28.5% during the fourth quarter on both stronger grocery and restaurant sales. Specifically, sales over in Europe were particularly bright because they have a partnership with McDonald's to deliver their McPlant burger. As of right now, McDonald's doesn't have any Beyond Meat products in the United States, but it seems that this is very popular overseas. So I anticipate that the future of this company could be extremely bright, and I would love to hear your thoughts about this company down below. Next, let's talk about Apple, which is a huge technology company that is known for their personal smartphones, also known as the iPhone, and their MacBooks, which are personal laptops and computers. 
If you didn't know, Apple has been planning to build an electric vehicle to compete directly with Tesla, but recently they pumped the brakes on their plans for their electric vehicle. In a nutshell, the demand for electric vehicles are decreasing and the competition is too intense for Apple to confidently storm into this market, especially from the competition that we are experiencing over in the United States from Chinese companies. Now this is a bummer because Apple was developing autonomous self-driving technology for their electric vehicles, but overall I actually think this is a very wide move and here's why. Apple is sensing that the competition is too fierce and there's not enough market to go around for everybody, so Apple really doesn't see a huge profit for this particular business, and I think this is a very smart move for Apple to bow out. According to a very well-respected Wed Bush analyst named Daniel Ives, he had to say the following. With softer demand for electric vehicles and a fierce competition, Apple saw the writing on the wall. And honestly, I completely agree with him. After this announcement, it actually reflected very positively on Apple's share price, and if you didn't know I personally hold Apple in my portfolio and I would highly recommend that you look into this company for yourself. Meanwhile, Tesla, ticker symbol TSLA, and BYD, ticker symbol BYDDF, which are both huge electric vehicle manufacturers, are still heating up the competition. However, the competition is getting to Tesla, considering that Tesla is struggling to grow their profit margins, which are now in line with other traditional automakers. Originally, Tesla's economies of scale and their fantastic margins gave them a huge advantage over their competition. But but recently, the competition has been weighing on Tesla's future success, which is why we have seen their share price trend downwards. In my opinion, I will continuously invest into Tesla because they are so much more than an electric vehicle company. They also specialize in artificial intelligence, energy storage, and energy generation, and that's why I am buying into this company. Next up, we have a Micron stock in the news, ticker symbol MU, because this company is going to benefit greatly from artificial intelligence and the hype wave that surrounds it. According to a city analyst, Micron technology is positioned to become a large beneficiary of the rising demand for artificial intelligence semiconductors. The analyst also reaffirmed a buy rating on the stock, and he reiterated a price target of $95 per share. He believes that this company will experience loads of demand and high volume production for their HBM3E chips for NVIDIA's coming H200 graphics processing units. According to the analyst, he believes that HBM chips will account for 17% of the overall market for dynamic random access memory this year. But the best part in my opinion is that this analyst predicts that this company will release better than expected results from what analysts are estimating, and this could act as a phenomenal catalyst for their share price, and that's why investors need to be paying attention to Micron Technology, ticker symbol MU. Next up, let's talk about three companies that Kathy Wood is buying right now. And if you didn't know, Kathy Wood is the ARK Invest co-founder and CEO of ARK Investment Management, and here are some of her favorite positions. Recently, she has added to her stakes in Roku, 10X Genomics, and Intelia Therapeutics. So let's jump right in, starting off with Roku. If you didn't know, Roku is a streaming video specialist that has recently dropped by 35% in their share price over the last nine days. The reason for the negativity surrounding this stock is twofold. First, Walmart reported that they were in talks to acquire Vizio, and they ended up actually acquiring Vizio for $2.3 billion, and that essentially moved a potential retailer or a potential partner for Roku into a platform competitor. The other piece of news is that they brought in less than impressive results for their fourth quarter report, and that means that their share price followed suit by also plunging after that earnings report. Or just but despite all of this, Roku remains one of Kathy Wood's largest investments in ARK Invest's ETF. The streaming service stock is her fifth largest position across all of her ARK Invest holdings, which means that investors need to be paying attention to this company. In my personal opinion, I think investors should actually take advantage of this cheap share price because the company is continuously growing in a popularity. And here's what I mean. There are now around 80 million active accounts on that platform, where many people are spending 4-5 to five hours per day streaming through Roku's operating system. So this is fantastic news for this company, and I anticipate that their future will be a lot better than what we have experienced over the last few weeks. Next up, we have 10X Genomics, which is a life sciences specialist, which helps researchers analyze tissue at the individual cell level. You should also know that they posted a mixed quarter four results, to where their revenues clocked in ahead of expectations, while their fourth quarter earnings did not impress investors. And this would be the fourth time in a row where their bottom line disappointed investors, and that's why their share price has been trending downwards. 10X Genomics also initiated guidance for 2024, to where they believe they will bring in revenue 
revenues between 670 million and 690 million. However, this is not good news, because that means that their revenue growth rate is slowing, considering that their revenue CAGR for 2023 was 20%, but with this current guidance, they are only anticipated to grow between 8 and 12%. Next up, let's talk about Intellia Therapeutics, which also posted disappointing financial results. Now, the good thing about this company is that they have a large cash reserve and a good balance sheet, meaning that they can survive cash burn and less than impressive quarterly results. However, one analyst recently did downgrade the company, while another slashed their price target on this company's shares. Overall, Kathy Wood is doubling down on all of these companies, but the only one that I actually like on this list would be Roku. However, all of these companies are hyper risky, so please always make sure to do your own research before you make an investment decision. Now let's talk about some good news in regards to first solar stock. Recently, this company, which is a solar panel manufacturing company, reported strong quarter four results, which exceeded expectations. First Solar, ticker symbol FSLR, said that they earned $3.25 per share on revenues of $1.2 billion. The great news about this is that they beat on their earnings per share because analysts projected that this company would only bring in $3.14, but they actually brought in $3.25 per share. However, they did miss on revenues because analysts believed that this company would actually post to $1.31 billion, but they only brought in $1.2 billion. But overall, I would say that these are pretty good results. However, the news gets better in my opinion, because First Solar projects that their earnings per share for 2024 will be between $13 and $14 per share, which is a huge increase compared to what they brought in during 2023, considering that they only brought in $7.74 during that time. Therefore, on a per share basis, this is absolutely fantastic news. You should also know that First Solar is the largest largest US-based solar panel manufacturer, which recently gained 15% in 2023 before slumping in their share price in the beginning of 2024. But recently, analysts have turned more bullish and positive on this company in 2024 because they experienced an upgrade from Morgan Stanley, which now has a buy rating on this company. Morgan Stanley also believes that this company is anticipated to have a lot of growth and momentum from now until 2026. So I anticipate that you look further into this company because I believe that they are a phenomenal investment opportunity right now. Next up, let's talk about the AI-driven insurance company named Lemonade, which recently dropped by 9% in their share price. So let's talk about why that is. Lemonade, ticker symbol LMND, recently disclosed plans to double its growth budget this year, but they don't expect quarter one or full year revenue to reach the average analyst estimates for those periods. And this is bad news, which is causing the share price to drop. Currently, Lemonade expects quarter one revenue to be between 111 and 113 million dollars, while analysts expect that this company should bring in anywhere between 115 and 119.5 million dollars. And what makes matters worse is that these projections are for quarter four and not quarter one, meaning that quarter one will underperform what they will bring in in quarter four. Therefore, I think investors should wait a little bit before investing into this company, so I would love to hear your thoughts down below about Lemonade stock. Last but not least, let's talk about the most pressing upgrade and downgrades on the stock market right now, starting off with Domino's Pizza, ticker symbol DPZ, which we talked about earlier. Recently, Argus upgraded Domino's Pizza from a hold rating and they increased it to a buy rating with a price prediction of $530 per share, which is great news for this company. Next up, we have Piper Sandler, which upgraded Unity Software, ticker symbol U, from an underweight rating up to a neutral rating with a price target of $30. Ever since the company dropped 19% in their share price, Piper Sandler believes that this company now has a fantastic and very attractive risk to reward profile, and I completely agree. The risk to reward ratio here is absolutely amazing, so I would highly encourage you to do your own research and look further in this company. Next up, we have Bank of America, which double upgraded Sprouts Farmers Market, ticker symbol SFM. They upgraded this company from an underperform rating to a buy rating, and they had a huge price target increase from $30 up to $70 per share. So this is very good news for this company. Wells Fargo also upgraded Kroger, which could potentially have a merger with Albertsons. And they were upgraded from an underweight up to an equal weight rating, and their price target increased from $42 per share up to $50 per share. And I think it's because of the merger, which actually could go through with Albertsons. And I would love to hear your thoughts about this down 
down below. For the top five downgrades that you need to be aware of, Roku, ticker symbol ROKU, which we talked about, was downgraded from an equal weight rating down to an underweight rating. Their price target also was lowered from $77 down to just $51 per share, and this is because of Walmart's acquisition of Vizio, which we talked about earlier. Next up, we have New Street downgrading ARM, ticker symbol ARM, from a buy rating down to a neutral rating with a $110 price target. That means that this company has around 26% downside from their current share price of $146, and for me personally, I would not mind if this company dropped in their share price more so I can buy more of this company at a cheaper price. Also, I do believe that they are trading at a premium right now, so I would love for this company to become cheaper so I can acquire more shares. Now, even though we saw one analyst upgrade Domino's Pizza, we see another analyst from JP Morgan actually downgrade the stock from an overweight rating down to a neutral rating, and they also increased their price target from $420 up to $430 per share. So this is kind of a mixed bag here. Lastly, we see that Sunrun was downgraded from a buy rating down to a neutral rating, while their price target was cut from $20 down to $13 per share. With that being said, I would love to hear your thoughts about any or all of these companies down below. Don't forget to go and annihilate that like button right now. Subscribe if you are new. Comment your thoughts down below, and I will see you in the next YT video.